It's usable. The Mew Mini Plus can definitely be used as a video player. However, there are some upsides and especially downsides that I want to talk about. Firstly, let's go to test number one. This is Grave of the Fireflies. Before anything, let me tell you that 480p is definitely the resolution to go to watch videos in your Mew Mini Plus. It doesn't feel like 480p in modern devices. It feels more crisp. I wanted to try a Japanese movie first because it has the nostalgic vibe of animes, but it's still a full length movie. The Mew Mini Plus has a 4x9 screen. This is the aspect ratio of retro TVs, but this is not a TV movie. It's made for movie theater screens, but thanks to the awesome quality of the Mew Mini Plus screen, it's still a joy to watch. Even in our very first test, we can head to some conclusions. First, the speaker is not good enough. I mean, it's usable and you can definitely understand what's going on, but if you turn up the volume too much, there are gonna be tons of distortions. It was just not made for this. So one thing you can do is watch movies that have subtitles, but those subtitles need to be inside the video file. You cannot load separate subtitles files in FFLA. I'm going to talk about those later. Pressing the start button, you can either stretch or adjust the screen mode. I bet you'll prefer to use the screen in the original format, so let's use it this way. In order to analyze our second test, check this out, FFPlay is really easy to use and activate. If you're using Onion OS, there's absolutely no need to download anything from the internet. Just head to Apps, then Package Manager, press the R button to go to Apps, and then you activate the video player. Then you press Start twice. To be frank, I haven't really tried all the formats that work in FF Play, but I did try MP4 and MKV, which are the most popular video formats in my opinion. What leads us to our second test. Don't worry, I'm gonna teach you how to convert your own video files and cartoons in this very video. This is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Here we have a pretty dark movie. It's not the darkest of them all, but it, it's not a cartoon either. This specific file I was able to obtain with subtitles. This means that the Mew Mini Plus will automatically load them. However, I'm not quite satisfied with what the Mew Mini Plus screen can offer when it comes to subtitles. The resolution for the movie itself is great, and I can even call it beautiful, but the subtitles are not clear enough for one to read during a full-length movie. Yeah, you can definitely understand what's written, but I wouldn't want to rely solely on those in a movie that is in a language that I don't understand, unfortunately. Two meters, one keeper, and the seeker. That's you. There are three kinds of balls. This one's called the quaffle. Now the chasers handle the quaffle. Try to put it through one of those three hoops. So this is the map of the controls of FF Play. Notice that we can apparently turn the subtitles off. Yeah, apparently. Because I've tried all the buttons in the map and actually every combination possible, and I still can find a way to turn the subtitles off. Weird. Honestly, I watched the full movie here and it's watchable. Keep in mind my observations about the sound and the subtitles so far. Test number three, TV series. Talking about the time that you're gonna have to spend converting all these movies and files to 480p and the amount of time that you're actually gonna be able to enjoy them in your device, I can properly tell you that TV series are not worth it. Like it's one thing to download a movie that you like and you always watch and have nostalgic feelings for, but a TV series that you wanna watch is just too much. Check out this chart I made with the time that it took to convert all these files to 480p. Add the time to remove your SD card from your device, plug it in your PC and transfer everything. And let's not even talk about the time that you're spending to find these videos, if you know what I mean. It's just much easier to use your dang phone, my friend. And I made a whole video talking about the Mew Mini Plus as an e-reader device, but it's a completely different story here. Like in a five megabytes file, a book that you can easily find online. You can have 5, 10, 15, freaking 20 hours of entertainment. So it's simple and the experience is pretty much flawless. It's a perfect call for when you're tired of gaming during a road trip or taking a time off social media and phones in general. So all this work for a 20 minutes episode, <laughs> it's, it's amazing how we're able to do that, but I don't even picture myself doing it for an everyday purpose. I'd rather just watch it on Netflix, on my phone. So that's a no for me.
Test number four, SpongeBob SquarePants. Whoa, 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 this is different. 90s cartoons and anime are something else, for real. I mean, I would definitely dedicate a bit of storage in my SD card for one or two seasons of SpongeBob, which is an incredibly rewatchable masterpiece that, and hear me out, was made to run in this resolution. This is gorgeous, the Mew Mini Plus screen colors are delightful and the brightness is more than enough for watching it indoors. However, outdoors, I just can't put up with today's sun. So now I'm under a shade. So let's see how our videos perform here. Okay, I'm gonna set the brightness to max. That's 10. I'm gonna use the main lenses. All right, let's see how this screen performs under direct sunlight. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> Definitely bad. Yeah, but under a decent shade, it's decent. Also, TV shows are not gonna be my go-to Miyu mini videos for now. I mean, it's better in person than in the video, but it's still dark. In person would be pretty much like this. Yeah, this is the level of brightness I'm seeing in person. The audio is still kind of an issue. If you turn it up too much, there's gonna be distortions, but Come on, I feel something completely different when watching this compared to a TV series. Maybe nostalgia, as if the video player was being used for something that was actually created for. So, sound doesn't bother me as much now. That's cool. Unfortunately, there are no controls for screen brightness within the app, so you need to do this. If you want to change the brightness of your screen, you have to press the main button and then start to head back to the menu, then go to settings. Now you change your brightness and after you do that, you go all the way back to FF player and then you resume your stuff. Speaking of tweaks, you may have noticed that I basically have converted everything to 480p, because I said I did. And the reason for that is pretty simple. While the Mew Mini Plus is capable of running content in 720p and above, it lags considerably and frequently desynchronize video and audio. I have transferred some videos in both resolutions, and you're gonna be able to see for yourselves. And besides, the Mew Mini Plus screen can't even show all the pixels of a 720p video, so it's gonna look the freaking same, but 480p runs perfectly. Speaking of, to convert your videos, movies, and cartoons, we're gonna use a software called Handbrake. It's free and it's available for Windows and Linux and I think Mac as well. So this is really simple to use. Just hit file, then you're gonna pick your video and, ins <laughs> and inside this tab we're gonna change the preset to fast 480p30 and then if your video has subtitles you're gonna have to change them here. Then you're gonna have to click this browse button to pick where it's gonna be saved. And then you just hit start encode. And now the software has converted your video. The bigger the video, the bigger the time it's gonna take to convert them all. About cartoons, I do recommend the Mew Mini Plus as a video player if you intend to keep some episodes of the cartoons you love and would want to rewatch based on the reasons I just listed here. This is peak usage for FF Play right there. Now YouTube videos, no. Number five, check out this YouTube video I downloaded from YouTube to test out. This is a straight up waste of time. You won't be enjoying an audio quality that a phone has, nor the video quality you're supposed to be watching. This video was also downloaded in 720p and the original version runs poorly. Just like last year, same dimensions. Same this is the converted version in 480p and it runs way, way, way better. Again, you have the option to stretch the video to cover the whole screen. And I don't think it's a hugely stupid idea. Since the screen is so small in its length, it feels good to use more of the real state you have, even if things look more stretched. What doesn't happen in animes? Number six is Naruto Classic. This is 4x6 and looks great. I mean it.
My only problem with this is that, at least for me, I rarely re-watch animes at all, and Naruto in specific has many, many episodes. Maybe one fight in specific would be good to have here, but even that could last for two or even three episodes. Also nowadays, we have many anime options in Crunchyroll and even Netflix. It's not easy to find and download those in MP4. Not easy. But it feels as good as watching 90s cartoons. Perfect color, sufficient audio, and it also feels like it was made for this. Trust me, it, it might not be reflected on how I'm recording, but trust me, the screen is perfect for this. I'm seeing a perfect image here. The only problem is how inconvenient it is to download and transfer these. That was in 480p, this is how it runs in 720p. In case you download it in this resolution, which is not gonna be that much of a common thing, since these old animes are almost never in HD. This is 720p. This is 480p. Also, I wanted to try how it would be to have YouTube videos of music, you know, like live performances. So I downloaded a simple plan performance, which was in 720p, like widescreen, and then I edited it in Premiere. So I put like a blurred background. And this is how it looks like. And this is how it runs in 720p. I also started to wonder how it would be to listen to an audiobook here. I know it's not really what this app was made for, but there are some audiobooks available on YouTube. And what if you just want to download them as is and quickly import to your Mio Mini Plus? For this test, I downloaded the same 10 hours audiobook in both MP4 and MP3 files. Let's see which one would be more convenient. Neither of them are really great. Watching it in FF Play is not good. Firstly, narrators often have a deep voice, and once again, the speaker can't really handle it properly. But the worst part for me is the lack of a measurement system at all. Like, this is a 10 hours audiobook. How am I supposed to know in which point I am at? Like, I know that if I press these arrows here, I'm gonna, you know, go forward or back in time, and the Y and X buttons go 10 minutes, but that's all I know. I don't know where I am at right now. Like, there's no interface at all. At least it resumes from the points you stopped. So if I quit here and open it up once again, I'm gonna be take taken to just where I stopped. That's good, I guess. Watching it in the audio player app doesn't really grant you many advantages, unfortunately. Except actually being able to know what point you're at. So after all, I think the best way to download your audiobooks is directly as mp3 and use this native app to run it instead of FF Play. At the end of the day, I never really saw the point in using your Mew Mini Plus to play videos at all. But after lots of you guys recommended me to try it out, I actually found out that I could genuinely use it to store some cool episodes of old cartoons and anime. Those really felt legit here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe.